Good morning, traders. It is Monday, July 22nd. Taking a look at the charts, we got the SP500. And if we look at the 30 minute chart here on the left, we've dipped down into an oversold territory. We had a knee jerk reaction bounce, and we had a big gap up to the upside that uh, we had a, a pop and drop where it popped higher, sold down, filled the gap, kept going, and we had a pretty strong sell off into the close on Friday. Uh, overall, it's back down into oversold territory and at support. And today we are seeing the markets bounce about a quarter or half a percent, depending on the index. So we are seeing a, a bounce back up to this uh, around this 85 area. Nothing too significant yet. But uh, again, I talked about this last week that we are getting we're into this area of the market where it could roll over at any point. We got to be aware of that. And if we look at the market here uh, in terms of where we are in the cycles in the lower end, we're somewhere potentially over here, which is where the market starts to potentially top out and roll over. We've seen this a couple times uh, when this uh, pink cycle gets into the overbought territory and starts to get underneath the big longer term blue cycle. And we get into this kind of potential topping phase right up into here. We had it again in this area right over here. And we're just starting to break below it again right now. So we're into this phase here where we could start to see a much stronger correction. Of course, uh, when you're playing the trend, eventually when the trend reverses, uh, the last trades put on will be losers until you and then you start the next trend to the downside. And then when it reverses, same thing. So I am anticipating we're going to take uh, a loss at some point here. The market is frothy. It's getting close to rolling over. And this type of price action we're seeing on the 30 minute chart where we had a, uh, a strong pullback to the 20 day. We had a strong rally and then we had a big gap to the upside. Uh, this was, uh, this might have been a good time to really just pull that trade off looking back hindsight 2020, but it's very similar to the type of pattern we saw at the May high. If we just squish the chart back down and just zoom over to the May high and zoom in, we had this very similar type of price action where we had a sharp pullback to the 20 day. The market was in a similar situation, starting to roll over. Everything was starting to look weak. We had a gap up and it pushed up. And then of course the next uh, session had a big drop down. This here is very similar type of price action as we're seeing right now. So we're, we're into this area where we start my, might start to flip flop the trend and for it to pick up a bias to the downside and start to uh, do a larger uh, consolidation. Again, if we zoom out a bit, you can see here uh, the trend uh, broke down, consolidated for a bit, and then really sold off until it reversed and then started the new uptrend. So here we are now back up into this where we've had the drop into the 20, a bounce, a pullback, and we might continue to see some volatility. Hopefully we'll see the market push up. You can see our cycle bias here to the upside today. Maybe we'll see uh, actually today is more or less to the downside. So it could uh, any pop today could sell back down and fade. Uh, hopefully we'll hold support and get some traction maybe tomorrow and start moving back up to the upside so we can get hit our target on the on the index trade here with SSO. Now if we take a look at UGLD, which is our long uh, gold, if we just take a look at the chart here, we've uh, got potentially uh, starting to see a little bit of a bounce again. Uh, at this point, we're going to have a more or less looks like a somewhat of a sideways day. Maybe we'll see a pop tomorrow in gold, uh, some more volatility. Overall, when we look at the gold chart, and this was my concern last week with gold. Let's just zoom in on the gold chart. More or less, we're having a similar type of setup in the market that we saw right up here and actually over here. Uh, that type of pattern is starting to unfold where uh, the gold gold miners and silver popping and really uh, starting to outperform gold. And uh, this is usually when we start to see some pretty significant tops. Obviously, we're into a kind of resistance zone long term on the chart. We have broken to the upside, but we're still struggling within some key resistance zones. And uh, over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be pretty uh, important where, where gold goes. We may We'll have, to, we'll have to see how it unfolds here. We do want to get long metals uh, or silver or miners going forward, but this type of volatility is usually the sign that we're going to see some type of pause or pullback. But last week we saw everything break to the upside and you got to follow suit on a, on a potential breakout to a new bull market. When the leaders are leading, uh, you got to kind of follow suit and we could still very easily see this bull market just take off, but we do need to be aware of this 
could still be a really choppy type of breakout and it could be a false kind of shakeout for a little bit and we may have to re-enter uh, down the road. Uh, everyone is excited about gold. It's all breaking out. Everybody's buying it. it seems like everybody's already bought it. Uh, so I do feel as though we could see it pull back uh, before it really takes off to the upside. But we are in position for it because it has broken. The question is, can it hold and uh, continue to move higher? So let's take a look at the gold miners, GDXJ. Obviously, you can see here a big pop, really outperforming, moving to the upside on a, on a breakout. We'll see how things unfold there uh, this week. If we um, take a look over at our short-term cycle, you can see uh, overall expecting some some choppiness in the market uh, for miners might see it uh, chop around for a few days. Nothing too significant. Uh, overall, still looks like it'll want to hold this bias. Again, we're not looking for prices to move with these cycles. All we want to know is when the cycle is sloping down, there's going to be a side when you're in an uptrend, there's going to be a sideways to downward price action when the average price is sloping up we can expect price to move higher uh, sideways or higher. So that's all we're looking for. We're not ever looking for gold to, or miners to or anything follow the price action looking on these charts. We just want to know the bias. Is it going to be a neutral or down day or is it going to be neutral in up day for miners? And more or less, if we clear the chart here, looks like for the week, more or less, we've got a sideways to upward bias in the market with some higher lows and higher highs on the cycles. Now, if we take a look over at natural gas, let's just zoom in on the daily chart here. Natural gas, uh, it's it's in it back, it's it's flip flopping here. It was in a kind of neutral, back to a, a, a short term oversold territory. Today, it's starting to bounce. It's trading up at uh, 227, so it's trading up a little bit. There's a gap here. Uh, overall, not looking to get into natural gas at this point. Uh, but it looks like we got an upward bias for the next session and a half or so. We'll see how that goes. But overall, it's still struggling and kind of chopping around. Uh, no real clear bottoming or uh, bullish formation or even bearish formation. It's really neutral here. It's kind of got lower lows. It's got higher highs. So it's very broadening and tough to trade. So we're just going to leave natural gas at this point. Looking at crude, up 1.3% this morning. We did get out of it. Uh, down over here, the, pre the previous session overall, it got very oversold, a little overstretched with news, enough momentum to really kind of flip it to the downside. We are now into more or less a downward uh, bias in the market. And um, we've got a downward bias in the cycle for the next uh, about two sessions. So today we could see it pop up a bit. And over there, we could over the next two sessions, could see it fade back down and sell off. And if we look at the daily chart, you can see these pretty clear lines in the sand where we've got uh, this blue line, we've got this blue line, and we've kind of broken down into this area. We're ping-ponging around. We're below almost all the key moving averages. So we might see it uh, trade higher here for a bit, but overall, it looks like it's going to have a bias to the downside and could end up continuing to sell down. And uh, we may look to get short crude if uh, we get a, uh, a setup here going forward. Uh, last but not least, let's just pull up the U.S. dollar real quick. Here is the dollar index. This is the weekly, ch uh, this is the daily chart. Uh, the daily chart here, nice rally. It's been consolidating in a nice bull flag. It's trading higher today, and we could very easily see the dollar continue to move up. I'm still gunning for this 98. It looks like it should hit 98 uh, or, or even these previous highs over here. Simple Fibonacci measured move. Um, I don't have it on Finviz, but more or less, you look at that price and the pullback, the height here, you can measure somewhere over here. It would bring us somewhere into that same area, that 98, uh, these previous highs over here. So there is potential here for the dollar to continue to move up this week. And, uh, and that could keep that little bit of pressure on the metals going forward. Anyways, that's it for this morning. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.